We have one YouTube family. Maverick in the building again. <laughs> Are you up now? You know something not too big for conspiracy theories, though. Yeah, man. Me believe in the simplicity of naivety. See, so, <laughs> me is not a man to buy in a conspiracy theories big time. Me not naive really still, you know. See, but me not buy in a too many conspiracy theories. But anyway, me see a lot of people say, controversial sprinters, the Namibian peer of Christine Ebuma and Beatrice Masilingi. Everybody know about them in the world of track and field. You know, so the two of them injured right now. <laughs> both injured and their coach came out and said that they will miss definitely miss the namibian national trials which is coming up i think early in a june so both of them are out of the trials injured now we don't know what the selection policy for the namibian team to the world championships entail we don't know what the what for them policy go if you're happy go them trials go run for make the team or the governing body can just select them as soon as they get fitter. We don't know how deep them sprint pool is. So, therefore, the imperative of running at the national trials, we don't know the degree of importance and that. But we just say what the facts are. The coach and them will miss the trials. So, that could potentially mean they will miss the world championships as well. But I don't know if people remember the whole trail with Marcelini and them boomers. You know. Remember, them, they are two 19 year olds, you know. See, they're involved in athletics for about three years now. They just start running athletics, you know. Just start sprint. In fact, they used to run 400. And they burst on the scene a couple of seasons ago running 400 meters. But they were so impressive. See, that World Athletics took an interest. And they said, say, okay, they do this testosterone test on them. And they realized say, them, they have high levels of testosterone. More than the tolerable levels of testosterone in their system. So the World Athletics get caught up in a quagmire and decides if you send them down at the sprints, 100 and 200 go run. I think we still have theorized to them do that with the hope that because of the, the depth and the quality and the feeling and the sprints in the world at the time, they might hope to make an impression down there. But, <laughs> but you know what? After that, Mboma ended up winning the Olympic silver medal in the 200 meters. If it was been a super, super Iliad Thompson era, Mbuma would have been the 200 Olympic champion today at 18 years old. Marcelengi not as talented, obviously, but she's there and there about as well. And the cries were coming loud and clear from people like me. And of course, within the, the, the walls of power and world athletics as well, there were concerns about the integrity and the credibility of the sport because of the presence of these athletes. As we said, they said they don't, from 400, come down up to the 200 and 100, you know. See, saying that the, the advantage that the testosterone levels give them up at the higher, the, the longer events, would be as, as, as distinct or as clear or as conspicuous in the shorter events. But they're proven to be wrong. So, the embarrassment was coming quick and fast to world athletics, you know. And the calls were loud and clear that World athletics need to do something about these athletes with elevated levels of testosterone or else athletes with high levels of testosterone will start take over the sport of athletics. <laughs> See, so, world championships approaching. Everybody are worried. You saw M. Boma last year running at the Olympics. Everybody I say, yo, myself included, you know. I always say M. Boma, come here, come break all this 200 world record before Ilian Thompson here, you know. And Shelly and Crazy Price and all of the girls that we are run with them now my levels of testosterone. You know? And the theory expanded meant that if an athlete like Mboma becomes world champion and Olympic champion and world record holder, pretty soon all the athletes out there competing in all the different events, all the people out there with elevated levels of testosterone who are not competing now because they can't harassment and all of them something. If these people were dead, if this was now, and the floodgate was open, all of them little girls out there with high levels of testosterone, you know, would have been dead, encouraged now, and inspired, you know, to get involved with track and feet. And ultimately, just think about it rationally, and just think about it. Ultimately, if high-level testosterone athletes, female athletes now, 
start competing in wider numbers. Eventually, the, the athletes with the normal testosterone levels would not be able to compete with them. So if, eventually, over time, it was if it was allowed to go unchecked, every single Olympic champion and every single world champion and every single world record holder would have been athletes with high levels of testosterone. So the danger to the track and field was clear and present. And people are born say, where world athletics are going to do? Where world athletics are going to do? Now, as I say now, initially, remember what I said initially? I don't believe in a conspiracy theorist. I am not a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> but, <laughs> Christine M. Boma, conveniently, see, as well as Beatrice Masilingi, perhaps the two biggest threats in terms of the theory, what we just expounded on a while ago, about the threat to the credibility of the sport. Mbuma and Masilingi, especially Mbuma, see, they were the, they representing the clear and present danger. See, all of a sudden, on the heels, not on the heels, but on the toes of the world championships approaching, the two of them got no lame. Eh? Just normal injuries, huh? just injured and gone out. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> I, when people are suggesting that world athletics do something about them, you know, I never know how creative world athletics could I get. <laughs> I don't know if it's not as we say, but I believe that it's something, you know. It just looks like I just normal injury them get for you. Normal injuries. If you remember, a boomer got hurt in that race in a, where was it, Kenya. See, running, trying to run down Shelly and Fraser Price, not 100 meters there. Eh? At 1067 race, there was Shelly run. That was the same race for a boomer, Papa Armstrong, you know. I try to find the extra gear for run down Shelly. See, Massilingi got hurt in our previous race, I think. Same place in Namibia. A boomer won that race. I saw both races. A boomer won that race that Massilingi pulled up in. So Massilingi, she pulled up Armstrong too. Lame. Two of them lame. Out of the Namibian trials. And the world championships are set to go on with that high profile 100 meters and 200 meters well enough without Masilingi or Emboma. What do you call that? Convenient, you think? Unfortunate but convenient injuries for the wider good. <laughs> anyway, we're not laughing after the girl name injuries still. Injuries are unfortunately a part of sport. And it is unfortunate whenever any athlete get injured. See, what we just have said, in the heights are not where we are pick out we here. Well, somehow we are pick we head. See, <laughs> see, trying to find a solution to what world athletics will do with Mboma. Athletes of the, the ilk of Mboma, and to a lesser extent, Masilingi, and other like athletes who are threatening to overrun the athletes, the female athletes with it. With a generally acceptable level of testosterone. See, all of a sudden, the forerunner of them, in another threat, have been confined to the sidelines due to injury. How convenient. Eh? <laughs> we don't know, as we say, the definitive, you know, we don't know what the Namibian authorities will do if, despite them being injured for the trials, they will allow them to represent the country at the World Championship. Same way, what we just say. We just say what I say, and you hear what I say. We know, you know, the conspiracy theories, but it kind of looks strange. We see the two of them just injured, so. You know, the two of them just run and just injured. So. You think, what do you think possible? Tell me what you think, YouTube fam. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, just drop a comment in the comment section and tell me what you all think. Christine M. Boomer and Beatrice Masilingi. To miss the Namibian trials due to injury. Will they be also miss the world championships due to injury? Right? Eh? <laughs> YouTube family check in. Oral Tracy Maverick. And don't just watch. Right? Make sure you comment. Yeah, subscribe to. Share. Like. Dislike if you want to. See, come give me a reason in the comment section. See? are the best and most credible opinion on all issues of sport. We look for some things and see some things where most people now look for and see. See? 
That's why they call me the Maverick. <laughs> anyway, people, check in at the comment section and tell me what you think about this particular issue with M. Boom and Masilingi being out of the Namibian trials. We're not sure about the World Championships, but possibly the World Championships. Check in. See? <laughs> we grab what we don't want to do.